and very happy to be here virtually. Uh, my name is Alexandro Stan from IN2 Digital Innovations. We work on AI powered applications that aim to improve the way that people access digital content. So relevant to be here. Um, I worked personally on developing solutions for cultural heritage and audiovisual archives for many years now, uh, I guess about 15. Um, today, I will speak to you a bit about enabling multi-perspective exploration of digital collections. And I have to say that sadly, my presentation will not include any cats. I'm very sorry for this. <laughs> um, worth mentioning is that this is um, ongoing work being carried out um, with the Q project, which is supported by the AI for Media Center of Excellence. Um, so let's get started. Um, um, today was, uh, was a special day because it marked the UNESCO World Day of Audiovisual Heritage. Um, and so it was a good day also to reflect on the current state um, that we're in, um, respect to archives, especially the audiovisual ones. Um, so of course, over the last years, there have been this huge investment and large efforts put into the digitization um, and um, um, organizations are committed to continue this work in the, in the coming years as well. And indeed, this effort seemed to have um, paid off um, and there are countless hours um, and records that have been digitized. Um, but does this um, mean that, uh, does this increase in digitization translate directly into an increase in the level of access to these resources? And um, as you might guess, it's not always this um, direct connection. So you not only need to produce high quality metadata when you're digitizing this and the process of um, producing this metadata has been in recent years facilitated greatly by um, recent advancements in machine learning with automatic uh, annotation. Um, but what you need to do is of course also you need to be able to clear the rights or figure out the sustainable licensing model for the digital artifacts and for data that you are doing. Um, and most importantly, you also need to um, bring digital contents to your target audience. And this is not trivial at all. Um, and when you have on top of this an exponential increase in the size of the digital collections, um, as well as the um, rich mix of various modalities of um, the records and the content, um, this brings about many challenges. So digitization alone is not an answer. Um, and um, in fact, as more digital content becomes available, it is um, now a bit more difficult to find interesting or relevant material to um, separate what's interesting for uh, what is not. And especially for curators and professionals in the digital heritage domain, this is a bit of a paradox. Um, there are many more resources available at their fingertips, but of course, um, it's a bit more difficult to find the right ones. And um, so um, if we take a simple example um, that we deal with, which is Europeana. Uh, some of you might be very familiar with this. Um, uh, this is a, and you know, this is an impressive space of digital cultural heritage, which is aggregating collections from across Europe and providing free access to its data. Um, However, there are some challenges. So with over 53 million records, um, the single search bar that served as the centerpiece um, for the website for many years has become a bit of a bottleneck. So the strategy in recent years has gradually shifted towards more exploration of the available collection based on teams. Um, so now users can explore over 60 curated digital exhibitions, galleries, blog posts. So it's much more about the editorials. Um, but this, however, uh, have their own, let's say, challenges in how they are being created and managed since it's very much in, involves a manual process. Um, so in this context, um, how can cultural professionals and researchers um, explore existing media and digital collections in a more holistic way and um, more easily curate and showcase the insights gained? Um, and AI can help uh, to improve um, metadata and search, and this is the key part for this. And um, we think that automatic recommendations can uh, also play a huge role in surfacing this um, more interesting content. Um, now, we, 
introducing to you something that we call story spaces is a concept, it's a concept about um, uh, linking and creating connections between the records and between collections. Um, given that we have this, um, um, uh, let's say, set of editorials, which um, are in itself a complex container of uh, content items of records, and that um, these editorials are in fact the key aspects of how to um, explore and understand the topic from a 30, uh, from a 360 degree um, uh, perspective. Um, what we want to do is provide a way to automatically link editorials based on the metadata, which of the contain items to create a story space. Um, I will try to illustrate this in a bit and um, allow users to navigate uh, from one editorial to another thanks to the AI recommendations on the current part of the editorial, of the editorial which they are consuming on, on the blog post that they are seeing, for instance, and to explore in this way um, the topic into more um, uh, detail and maybe to see it from other perspectives as well. Um, to illustrate this, imagine this is your um, records um, collection and you have an editorial which is um, linking a couple of these records together, but from the same starting point, you could have actually several ones. And all of these are, um, are connected and there can be many forms of connections. This is only a very simple example to illustrate this, but in itself, the, the connections and the connected editorials, um, they are able to um, build up the story space. Um, so with Q, this is a web-based application that we um, are currently building um, based on an AI recommendations and an explainable user interface. Um, we went to respond to this modern needs of media heritage collections and professionals. Um, the main part is the recommender, uh, which is looking to create the connections between the records to records, records to editorials and editorials to editorials. Um, looking at different dimensions where these connections happen and um, looking to be able to also provide the um, end user to uh, the target audience, uh, which has experienced this information of um, why um, these connections are there. So um, that um, even people with limited ICT skills, they can easily uh, use this, they can easily un understand and explore the collections. Um, Important also to mention is that we're opening up uh, next year for ImageClef 2023, a um, specific task on content recommendation. Um, and we invite uh, the entire research community to uh, contribute here. So this um, has just been launched um, last week um, on the site of ImageClef. Um, we'll provide a data set based on Europana data and the task is um, about content recommendation, as I described it, looking at uh, different modalities in which um, uh, we can um, explore the editorials and link content uh, and editorials together. Um, the Outlook, we have launched uh, now a beta version of our Q system, and we're currently evaluating this with early adopters. Um, so, if this sounds like something that you're interested in, something that is relevant for your work, please uh, try it out and give us your feedback. Um, feel free to contact me um, either on Twitter or via email, and um, you can check out also um, the application at uh, q.in2.com. So um, thank you very much for your attention. I'm sorry I could not be in person with you today um, there, um, but I'm happy to take your questions virtually now. And I hope I didn't take too long. You're perfect, Alexandra. Thank you.
title from the description, um, um, trying to extract then automatically some topics and trying to put this into some, let's say, um, labels there and creating basically um, um, a vector of similarity between the, the items on the different uh, dimensions. Um, we're uh, trying in this way to um, keep track basically of where from which, let's say, um, from which aspect, uh, if you follow this way, um, certain recommendations are given. So is it because these items have been reused in similar um, the collections? or is it because uh, they uh, deal with uh, similar topics so that for the user, it's much more clear why am I being presented um, uh, these recommendations? Thank you. Um, any other questions for Alexandru? Uh, I see a question over here from Dave. Go ahead. Uh, sure, sure. I'm, I'm Dave Rice. Um, I remember working with some AI recommendation systems where it would give a result or recommendation that was a bit insensitive, uh, like like showing all people of color of, as being like a singular person, um, you know, or j just like recommendations that ended up needing to be reviewed or vetted. So I'm curious, like how you sort of over oversee the behavior of the AI in these recommendations. Mm. I think I was able to hear the question well, I, and I certainly agree that this this aspect of more, let's say, ethical AI is very, very hot topic. And um, in a way, we try to um, to tackle this challenge through this um, explainability aspect of the of, of the entire system, so as that you can so that you are able to see where this is coming from, to understand then if there are issues where the issue is uh, potentially coming from. Um, of course, uh, let's say um, you risk less of going into this um, difficult situations with cultural heritage data, but this can happen as well, certainly. So an opportunity for to, to correct it after the fact then. Um, yeah, and it's, it's for sure something that is um, very much a challenge at the moment, certainly. Thanks, Dave. Any other questions for Alexandru? OK, well, with that, thank you uh, very much, Alexandru, for joining us remotely. Really glad to have you here with us. Thank you very much for your attention and for having me. OK, round of applause thank for Alexandru.